All right, learning check four. If you can answer these without using the figure, um, the figure gives you some, some hints and just help with some of them. Um, this is a nice figure though, so you could refer to it. And I'm going to actually refer to it now to talk about what we're doing next. We've talked about the horns of the spinal cord. The horns are gray matter, cell bodies. You can really visualize like having a cell body here and that the axon of that cell body travels out to the it's a motor neuron, a somatic motor neuron, so to skeletal muscle, for example. Um, same thing with a sensory neuron coming in. So the other thing we need to do is get information from this section of the spinal cord up to the brain. So ascending, this would be sensory information, and down from the brain. So descending, this would be motor information. In order to do that, we need to have white matter and um, groups of myelinated axons are white matter. In the, the spinal cord, those are called columns or tracks. Tracks is what we saw in the brain, right? So tracks are usually like specific pathways. Columns are the groups um, of, let me just draw this. They're, they go like this, groups of myelinated axons. They go up and down. There's some variation with the names of different pathways that are called columns or tracks. Let's see this. Um, you've seen this figure on the left before. Remember though, this is a cross section. In reality, our spinal cord goes up and down. Not, well, it actually kind of has that shape. Um, and so we're taking a cross section, but we have to have things go up and down. So if we have axons, they're going like this. So you can see those columns, groups of white matter. So the columns are located in all of this area that surrounds the horn. I drew columns purple here, but here I'm just drawing in the whole area. This is all white matter. That means there's information um, traveling to and from the brain. And if we take a cross section, it's going to look like this. What are these things? So right here is the border between a horn and a column. So maybe this is right here. Here's horn and here's column. You can really imagine how these multipolar neurons here would be located here, right? And they would actually travel out this way um, and out to, in this case, this is lateral horn, so autonomic, so like a gland somewhere or smooth muscle. It's a little harder to imagine these columns um, cut this way, but I think uh, you can do it. <laughs> so this here, let me add the dendrites. This is a cell body, that's what this thing is. If I draw a similar thing over here, this is an axon that's cut at a cross section. So the axon is that middle part. What's that part surrounding it? Um, it's my, myelin. This is an axon. This little dot here is nucleus. Um, and it, the real histology does look very different, right? I could draw this one here a lot bigger. It would probably be more accurate compared to the cross section of an axon which would be surrounded by myelin. So white matter in the spinal cord is also called columns. Um, and there's gonna be specific columns or tracks, for example, like, let me just grab one right here. I'll show you some, actually, I do wanna show you right here. So let me actually erase some of this. Um, and I'm gonna show you the specifics. So I'm gonna show you a couple of ascending tracks or columns and descending. Ascending means going 
to the brain. This is going to be sensory, right? So a, one example of that is back here. And I'm going to be, I'm going to draw this on one side um, of the spinal cord. This, these columns would be located bilaterally. So this is our posterior column. And this is responsible, one place that carries sensory information to the brain. So for example, we could have um, something out here like a, a muscle and we've got a neuron or more than one unipolar coming in our dorsal root. We would have a synapse in reality, um, an interneuron, and then maybe that information would go up, ascend to the brain. Oversimplified, we'll see some path pathways and tracks next week, but um, that's what these columns are, is they would get information from, from either the brain, in this case, from the body itself, the sensory. There are a couple other um, ascending tracks. There are two that are called spinal cere cerebellar, You don't have these specific terms in your key terms yet. You will next week. Right now, I want you to know they are groups of axons with a common origin and a common destination. So a spinocerebellar, for example, goes to the cerebellum and is carrying a certain type of sensory information. One more. Ascending track. I'm just going to draw. I'm not drawing these to scale or perfect anatomy. Um, this is, um, I'm going I'm to call it, it's, it's an anterior lateral. That's literally where it is. We've got our spino, um, spinothalamic tract here that's carrying information to the thalamus. A lot of sensory information for these tracks starts with a spino name, even though it's not starting in the spinal cord, it's, it's being processed there first. It's really periphery thalamic, but via the spinal cord. Okay, then we also need to have some descending tracks. So again, being able to visualize that these are columns of axons going this way is important. Descending, so this is from the brain. This is going to be motor information, right? It's gotta be. So for example, there is a kind of over here, yeah. A lateral corticospinal tract. I'm just gonna add this one in as well while we're here and make sure I get it somewhat right. Yeah, right along here, there's also an anterior corticospinal tract. Two different locations, anterior corticospinal, but corticospinal means they're both taking information from the cortex and it's going down to the body and out. I'll actually show an image of this, this one in the next slide, motor information. There are a couple of other, um, I'm gonna just gonna draw a few separate ones and just tell you generally what they are. I'm not gonna give you specific names right now because sometimes you don't like it when I give you specifics. Um, four is four. There's actually five different tracks, but they're um, gonna come from four different places that are in the brainstem or the vestibular apparatus. So, um, balance, and then two, so out, so spinal. So how about if I give you one example? One example, I guess this is the vestibulo, vestibulo spinal. A lot of our motor processes are actually automatic, not autonomic, because it's still skeletal muscle, they're controlling body position, but it is able to do so without our conscious 
um, control based on our place in the world, both our muscles, um, vestibular apparatus of your ear is balance, um, your semicircular canals relate to balance. So that's able to provide motor information directly um, that allow you to do a lot without even thinking about it. Okay, so again, the main important thing right now is that these different tracts of white matter contain bundles of axons with common origins and common destinations and common functions. And we'll see examples of ne them next week. Show you one example right now, corticospinal pathway. I said that there was a lateral one. I showed in the previous video, a lateral and an anterior. So here they are, two different places in the spinal cord where these can travel. Um, all this information is coming from the primary motor cortex. So a motor command is initiated um, consciously in this case. So a conscious decision to throw something, decision to move. That information travels down the spinal cord in these corticospinal tracts. This name tells you it originated in the cortex and it's going to the spinal cord secondarily. Groups of white matter with common origins, common destinations in that skeletal muscles, which skeletal muscles is gonna completely depend on what your motor commands it are and likely more than one um, and functions to initiate movement by stimulating motor neuron, right? This is somatic nervous system is this, you know, this piece right here. Um, but it really all is, this is, you know, how we control our somatic nervous system, conscious control of skeletal muscles. This is the main pathway for that conscious control. All those vestibular spinal, um, there's a bunch of brainstem nuclei that are still part of the somatic nervous system, but are not under our direct conscious control. We'll see more of these, these path, we'll do these pathways next week. Learning check five. So got four questions here for you to answer. <laughs> 